Well, all these uh, problems occur on a spectrum of severity, from very mild to terrible. Um, and so our most important job is to figure out where your fetus is on this spectrum of severity. And remember what the spectrum is, how good or bad are the kidneys, their ability to make urine, has that been ruined? And how uh, good or bad are the lungs? The lungs only get bad if the amniotic fluid goes away. So the sequence is obstruction of the flow of urine, ruins the, stops the urine from coming out, backs up and ruins the kidneys. The urine not coming out into the fluid around the baby, the amniotic fluid, is what makes the small lungs. But the things we <clears throat> look for first and foremost are the quantity of amniotic fluid. So if the quantity of amniotic fluid volume is very, very low, or oligohydramnios, that indicates a very serious form of urinary obstruction. If the amniotic fluid volume is normal and the main findings are in the urinary tract, that is a dilated urinary bladder and potentially a dilated posterior urethra, then the most likely diagnosis would be posterior urethral valves if it's a male fetus. Um, once we make that observation, we look for a number of other things. One is the appearance of the kidneys. They're often a little bit dilated. They have hydronephrosis. But if the morphology of the kidneys is maintained, there's good cortex and this area of the middle part of the kidney, the medullary areas are still intact, uh, it's very likely that the fetus hasn't suffered terrible uh, irreversible kidney damage. However, if the fetus has echogenic kidneys with hydronephrosis, and most importantly, tiny little cortical cysts that may be very difficult to observe uh, at first glance, but we look for them, they have those tiny little cysts. That's virtually 100% predictive of this thing we called cystic dysplasia, which is an irreversible kidney damage as a result of uh, more distal urinary tract obstruction.